Rabbi Riskin in 1983 is in Efrat. He just made Aliyah from being the head of the yeshiva and the head of many of the Lincoln Square Synagogue and a big, big hush of a guy. And he wanted to fulfill his dream and his wife's dream to go to Eretz Israel. They, they go to Efrat. There's no electricity and there's no heating and it's freezing in Efrat. And to make matters worse, he basically is very low on money. It cost much more money than he anticipated. He didn't have money. He was teaching at a little a class, uh, 20 kids. That was his whole parnasa. And he's waking up every morning thinking to himself, maybe I made a big mistake. Maybe I should go back to New York. I was a big rabbi over there. What am I doing in Eretz Israel? What am I thinking? This isn't going to work. And one night, he gets a knock on the door from a guy named Yonah. Yonah says, Rabbi Riskin, 2 to 6 in the morning tonight, you have guard duty. Everybody has to do their shift, even the rabbi. So his wife is like, okay, uh, if uh, your dad, if Abba is doing guard duty tonight, maybe we'll go to Yushalayim for the night. Because, you know, Rabbi Riskin had never, like, heard a, a, a mosquito. And he was going to protect uh, Efrat. So uh, they take him down to the forest. And he taught him how to shoot a, an Uzi. And they did a shift that night, Yona and Rabbi Riskin. And what do you do on a shift? You walk around and you schmooze. Walked all, it was 15 minutes, the whole loop around a frat in the middle of the night. And he asked, no, Rabbi Riskin, what's your life story? And he says, ah, oh, I was a big rabbi, I did this, I did that. And I gave it all up so that me and my wife can make aliyah. And he's kind of nostalgic and he's kind of thinking as he's saying the story, maybe, maybe this was a mistake. What about you? He says, me? Well, actually, uh, Yonah says, I was born a Christian. And he says, really? It's from Holland? And uh, how, did, how do you come to Judaism? Well, in 1967, I read in the newspaper what happened to the Jewish people in the Six-Day War. And it moved me. Something inside of me was so moved, so touched. I decided, that's it. I want to learn more about Judaism. And, you know, everyone, there's a, there's a mandatory draft in Holland. And I found myself asking to meet with the rabbi and not the priest. And I found myself learning Hebrew. And slowly, slowly, I, I got more and more close to the Jewish people. Even so much that one day, I, was, I, was, I learned how to bench. The rabbi taught me how to, how, to, how to say benching. And as I'm benching, I hear my mom mouthing the words in Hebrew with me. I'm like, Mom, how do you know Hebrew? She's like, actually, I used to uh, uh, work for Jews. So I learned uh, benching by heart. So this is amazing. It's like, wow, it's a sign from God. I got to keep pursuing Judaism. 1973, Yom Kippur War breaks out. And Israel needs help. Uh, farming the places that the farmers uh, went to war. So who's going to you know, gather all the, the dates? So he volunteers. Yonah volunteers. And he learns, falls in love with the land. He decides, that's it. I'm converting to Judaism. And he starts learning all the laws of, of Judaism and Jewish philosophy and Jewish history. And one day he goes back to visit his family. And he has a vegetarian uh, dinner, some, some restaurant. He says, Mom and Dad, I have something to tell you. I'm converting to Judaism. And, they, and his mom faints, literally faints. And she says, you don't have to convert to Judaism. I'm Jewish. <laughs> and she says, what do you mean? She says, after the Holocaust, I vowed that I would no longer... My, my dad was a chazin, but I would no longer... I would no longer practice the Judaism of this God. I couldn't, I couldn't worship him anymore. But if you want to worship the God that I no longer believe in, I give you my bracha. And that's how Yonah came to, it, to Israel with a flawless Hebrew. And at that moment, Rav Riskin took upon himself. He said, that's it. Hashem is fulfilling the prophecy that we just read. The Shav Hashem et Shvutcha. God is returning the Jewish people. He's bringing people from all over the world. They don't even know how they're getting back here. I used to do my meal in, in Nachlaot. It was over 50% uh, Gerim and, and, and Balchuvas was the other 40%. It was like, just I was the only you know, from, from Earth guy there. <laughs> Everyone's coming back to Eretz Israel. Nobody even knows how. And the, this, this prophecy is being fulfilled, mamish, in front of our eyes. So Rishon decided, that's it, I'm never going back. This is where Hashem wants me to be. And uh, he was able, now, you know, there's 40 shuls in Efrat um, in this chus of him staying there. So Hashem should bless us to strengthen our amuna, or strengthen us to stay in Eretz Israel, to make a difference in Eretz Israel. Whether you say a halal with a bracha, without a bracha, it's not important. What's important is that we have a karat tov every single day. Should be a, a little yom ma'ut to thank Hashem for the schus of in the vineyard Eretz Israel, and uh, Hashem should bless us. Hashem should bless us. Chaim, chaim.
Everyone, anyone, everyone is welcome to.